Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Barrel Studios and I want to do this video last week, but uh, as a quick heads up, my family and I all got COVID last week and we've spent uh, the week sort of uh, in isolation, recuperating, getting better. Um, we're fine. It was the Omicron variant. Still feel like it knocked me around. Bit, you know, I feel, yeah, it's a serious thing. You know, so I'm just kind of glad I was vaccinated and, you know, uh, didn't get the full force of COVID. But it really kind of also knocked around my plans for, uh, you know, Swords and Sandals Immortals promotion and, you know, talking to you guys about the game, the trailer breakdown. Next week's uh, big Steam Next Fest. Uh, I'll still have my boys at home while we sort of isolate. Uh, so it just makes it a bit chaotic to work. So. Firstly, yeah, apologies for the lack of, um, you know, content for me over the last week or so. But anyway, uh, today's a, a, a new day and I'm excited to be in front of the camera again. And today we're going to break down last week's uh, Sword and Sounds of Mortals game trailer. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you haven't seen it yet, there is a link in the description below here. Maybe go check that video out first uh, and get the full effect. Come back down, uh, come back here, and I'll break it down over the next sort of ten minutes or so, and just sort of just talk through bits that you might not understand, or you know, any like little bit of the trivia and secrets and so on, as best I can. All right. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into it, and I'll be pausing the video along the way just to uh, to talk through it. All right, and uh, just quickly before we begin, the demo is available to play on Steam right now. So after the video, go to Steam, check it out, and let me know what you think. I really can't wait for you guys to see uh, the game. All right. Okay, so uh, the inspiration for this trailer was pretty much the Tom Cruise movie Edge of Tomorrow uh, where you know he sort of is basically live die repeat you know he wakes up does the same sort of thing every day and you know dies at some point but he learns from it and that kind of inspired me with this trailer being the gladiator wakes up in the morning kind of shocked doesn't really know what's going on and goes through the day and you know I, I sort of got a wake fight die you know that kind of thing so let's keep going That gladiator there is Bruce the Useless, and he is the uh, basically the replacement for the Fearful Prisoner from Classic Sword and Sandals. Fearful Prisoner may make an appearance. He'd be really, really old in this game, but it'd be fun to have a little cameo of him. But Bruce the Useless is the uh, first gladiator you meet in this game. And here's a little fun fact. Um, you can't miss against this guy. You've got 100% hit chance. No matter what the stats say, uh, I've made it so while you fight him, you cannot lose and he cannot hurt you at all. Uh, just like in previous Swords and Sandals games. This is this first fight is just a way for you to um, learn the ropes in the most easy and gentle way possible. And he's a sad-looking Gunterian rogue who's tried to psych himself into the fight. But um, yeah, no chance for him to win at all. No matter what you do, you can't lose. That music is from the Overthrown, and they're a uh, amazing metal band from Sweden. So when you go to the trailer, you can see a link to the Overthrown's uh, music on Spotify and Facebook and so on. If you're into metal and um, you know awesome sounding guitars and powerful song uh, singing and everything, go check them out. And these guys are fans of the series and will be appearing as a special boss you can fight one after the other. There'll be a new battle mode uh, called. Um, one after the other. I can't remember what it's going to be called, but if you've ever played games like um, Marvel versus uh, Capcom and those kind of things where you can kind of tag players in and out, uh, this is basically how this is going to work. You defeat one, another one will jump in. There'll be sort of four hit, punt, uh, hit bars and that kind of thing, health bars. That, of course, is the battle intro. Um, in the next patch, actually, probably by the time you play this, well, over the weekend anyway, uh, this will be revamped slightly. I've added two new buttons um, here to see the effects of the weather. These little weather panels up the top there um, show you know it's 11 a.m. and it's clear and it's cold, fighting the hills. They're moving to a separate tab because now uh, species have advantages and disadvantages when fighting in the hills or the forests or in urban areas. Uh, when it's cold, essence regeneration is halved, that kind of thing. So the weather um, in extreme 
conditions like heat waves and freezing and so on um, will impact the game. There's also subtle things like when it snows, extra critical hit chance that you'll learn about during the game. And the final panel will actually break down your enemy's skills and talents if you, if you want to see that. It'll cycle through that, so look forward to that in patch one, uh, 0.2.1. That's the uh, Warrior Strike, which is uh, the Warrior's um, special skill that no other Gladiator can have. And up here you see a little yield thing. Um, by default, Gladiators will yield when their health runs out. You only see one yield animation at the moment, but I've got a bunch of other ones planned, um, whether, you know, no, that kind of thing. And I am planning, it's not in there yet, to have the Swords and Sandals 3s, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, I know it used to be like this in uh, Roman times, but this is the world of Tritonia. This is the world of Swords and Sandals. This just looks more obvious to the player as well. Uh, and you'll be able to either spare their life or take their life, and it'll make you good or evil, more or less good or evil. The little halo there and the little um, pitchfork, uh, you can see if a character is good or evil, and they will get skills and um, special things depending on their alignment. Right now, it has no impact on the game. So yeah, shops. Um, and you know, he's woken up again and he's now visiting uh, Guillaume de Langeville, uh, who sells you things. One thing that's not in the demo that will be in um, the early access build are enchanted weapons, magic weapons and so on. So, you know, strong axe of the bear, that kind of thing. And you'll be able to find blueprints along the way that allow you to, um, you know, forge your own weapons. You know, you might find a blueprint of the bear and the bear might give you extra vitality or something. So you give that blueprint to the Guillaume and then all of a sudden uh, something of the bear will start appearing in the shops. Each week you only see a random selection of weapons or every three days they update those. So pretty much, you know, every three days or when you travel from town to town, you will see new weapons. And I wanted to create the scarcity of weapons to create a variety and make things feel a bit more special. You can't just always get access to every weapon. If you like a weapon, it might not be there in three days. So you might have to sacrifice and sell some armor to get that weapon and vice versa, that kind of thing. You can see there there's sort of um, also little icons for... Um, sonic weapons and sort of laser guns and that kind of stuff they're coming in the early access build okay we just use the um, the old warrior strike on a floralisk which is another creature coming to the early access build as is the Yaren so we just wrestle the Yaren there and if I just go back a second you can see um here that's using the grapple so if I play it again yeah then he hit me um yeah so you can grapple like in sword and sandals uh three i think you know switch positions and that kind of thing you can shove um there'll be a special um kick that can be used <laughs> what you just heard in the background was my little boy charlie uh who's um, a bit upset. Charlie and Isaac, my boys, voice um, the Sagan blobs in the game. And a little later in the trailer, you'll hear them each just quietly. They're kind of funny. All right. So yeah, Yerins and Floralisks and Haxapods and other strange species are coming to the early access build of the game. And they'll have their own unique powers like Yerins can rip arms off and that kind of thing. Classic. <laughs> Look at <laughs> They're a Yeti. Okay, yeah, talents, talents and skills are in the game. Right now there's four trees. Uh, since this, I've actually added a uh, fifth tree, which is not available when you level up, but you can see it uh, when you go to your character panel, which just shows off your species and class talents and skills and that kind of thing. And that just basically said, you know, um, like um, Elder Hathians, uh, great desert fighters and get a bonus in the desert, but they struggle in the cold. So um, not all talents are good. They're more sort of, you know, um, but when you choose a species, you get that. There are also two new talent trees coming to early access called Adventure, which is all about um, when you're on the road, things like um, stuff that you use in the dungeons or, you know, um, stealing from merchants or, um, you know, faster travel, uh, that kind of thing. So there'll be some interesting talents there. I haven't quite worked out what they'll be yet. And later on, not in early, early access, but 
as we go through the early access period, I'll be bringing in um, the automatons. And because they're so different from everyone else, they have their own special talent tree uh, that you build up. They, they, fight, they operate so differently into the other creatures that they need their own talent tree. But that's coming. Yeah, this is cool. This is the overworld map bit. It's a little blurry there, but look, if I can get it. Yeah, it's a little bit blurry, but you can go all around the overworld map. Right now, you only get access to the first two towns in Willard Sound and Shackleford. Uh, but there is, you know, 36 towns and counting in the game. And that represents, you know, this is only a tiny part of a massive, massive game world that you can zoom out and move around on and so on. Um, you will be able to visit dungeons, which are little sort of uh, very, very simple uh, dungeons, not as deep as you'll find in Sword and Sounds 5, but still should be quite fun. Think of the dungeons you find in games like Hero Quest, the board game. I want this to feel more like the, a sort of a board game dungeon experience where you've got to go through, avoid some traps. Um, you, got, you know, you can't heal in the dungeon until you get to the... Um, the boss, that kind of thing. Uh, it should be a, a bit of fun. That's not coming to early access as well, but um, I want that to sort of expand the world. There'll also be mini adventures. There'll be random encounters, you know, where you get jumped on the road, or there'll be sort of that classic um, Swords and Sandals 2 style. Um, you know, you're an old um, merchant's cart has broken down in the field. Will you help him? And if you help him, you might get extra strength, you know, or if you don't, you might steal his gold or something like that. But the world map is really cool, done by a fantastic cartographer um, who um, I found on the Wanderdraft uh, Reddit forums. And Wanderdraft is a program he used to make this. I did the first version of it, which I'll show you at some point. Uh, you can see it in old screenshots, but he did a new one, which looks really detailed and wonderful. I'd love to get a huge poster size one of this, which I will at some point. So that little uh, chicken is actually um, one of the special taunts you can go in the game. I think it's like um, mock or something like that, where you're going to do a chicken dance to mock, and it sort of infuriates the enemy, and they run towards you. They get enraged, that kind of thing. It kind of forces them, hey, come come here, come here. Uh, I put it in the little campfire wake-up scene to, to sort of say, he's going crazy. He, he you know, Yet another day has passed, and he's going a bit nuts. Another creature there, Haxapod fighting in the... To Cache Desert, I believe, um, somewhere down there. Really cool background. And the Haxapods are, of course, excellent, um, you know, desert underground style fighters. There's a bunch of different varieties of Haxapods as well. If you see up here, Yak Dok Bod, every different species have their own random name generator. And these that's what these ones sound like. And uh, Yerins have their own, like, Wob Gob and that kind of thing. Uh, I put a lot of work into the random name generator. Every different... Uh, humans have their own, um, Gunterians have more Slavic names, the Fey have like Celtic names, uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, you'll, you know, if you're from a different part of the world, you may find yourself, uh, the name of your character, you know, of your name in the game, which is not something you often see in many games, which just have very generic Western style names. Uh, yeah, so, uh, he just got chopped in half there. Uh, that is what happens. His spine's been broken. His torso armor had run out. When you run out of armor, you can see this little bar at the top there. Uh, then you, if you get a critical hit on you, no, no critical, if you get a grievous hit on you, you will um, lose a limb. And if that limb happens to be your head or your torso, it's all over. If you lose an arm or a leg, you can still fight on. You might lose your weapon arm and not be able to use your weapon. Shield arm might not be able to use your shield legs and so on there's also a bunch of shield stuff coming i haven't forgotten about shields you'll be able to be special shield block defenses and things coming all in time there's a lot a lot to do still okay um yeah this is of course a nod to the classic gladiator theme song um guitars are in the game this kind of crazy psychedelic rainbow effect is i've got to admit to you it's a little trick I did for the trailer just to color cycle through. That color cycling isn't in the game yet, but if I can find a shader that does it nicely, I will. But guitars are in the game, and you can play guitars to, um, you know, to do damage or to sap essence from your enemy or to confuse them, that kind of thing. So there's some cool guitar effects in the game. And 
um, some powers to use. So if you're a bard type character, there'll be some guitars available. I think there's like five or six or more, maybe, and a guitar as well. Yeah, there's the town you can see there. Um, that's our first look at the battle caravan. You know, you've seen it before if you've followed development, but this is the full battle caravan. That is the uh, tavern keeper who sells you food and um, special stuff that buffs you during battle. And he'll also be selling useful things for the dungeon, like, you know, um, things to stop traps or, you know, put out fires and that kind of thing. Um, but he's not in the demo yet. Problem is he sells bard skills. And so I'm probably thinking about moving all the skills that the trainers sell over to the um, battle dummy, which could make that a bit more useful. You can see here, uh, this background is different. It's a rocky background. When you go from town to town, the background's changed to show you that you've moved on. And we're down in the desert here as well. And we're about to meet uh, Thaiga and the armorer. Yeah, classic Torn Attack. That's done a Grievous uh, bit of Sonic damage. Um, usually, so, okay, yeah. So Grievous hits do, you know, I think one and a half times or even two times the damage. If it's a Grievous uh, melee attack, like, you know, attack arms, legs, that kind of thing, a Grievous one will chop off a limb. A Sonic attack or a range attack won't do that. There's a lot of subtle si um, systems in the game for you to learn and for me to learn because I'm still figuring it out myself, you know. It's complicated, easily the most complicated game I've built. Ow. Okay, so that was the Barbarian Storm doing some damage against three different enemies. You heard a tiny little ow there. That was my boy Isaac. Let's play that again and have a listen. That's, he's uh, voicing, him and Charlie voice the Sagan Blobs. So check this out. If we go back to here. <laughs> Some of you might find that a really annoying. There aren't that many Sagan blobs in the game, but I, I mean, I think they're really cute and fun. But um, they're, you know, the, the Sagan. The story with the Sagan blob is that they are um, magical creatures made of like jelly that the wizard Sagan turns his enemies into Sagan blobs. So the evil ninja got turned into a Sagan blob. Um, there was a, another wizard called um, I can't remember what his name was, but he got turned into a Sagan blob. He became Physicles, and there will be some special Sagan blobs in this game for you to fight. They're rare because you know I don't think everyone's going to find a little kid voice had <laughs> fun but it's a little nod to my kids who have uh, you know mean the world to me and i want them as they grow up uh, to have more and more a part in this series and the games i make and i want them to feel like they were part of you know sword and sandals even from the very beginning so i got isaac and charlie in front of the microphone and we recorded those not easy to get it um uh, i think isaac was he did this about six months ago but charlie was um only about 15 months old when he recorded his and he just you know he couldn't sit in front of the microphone so it was quite hard to get him to, to make noises but they sound pretty cool you know who that is that of course is charlie white aka critical uh he's in the game he designed this character he voiced the character he's got an awesome deep voice um some people have said to me oh you should put the t-shirt on those are actually his ta tattoos they're um scans from his real body <laughs> high tech well actually you know scans of photos and so on uh he designed this character and i'm not changing it it's a hard first boss he said make him as strong as possible i know as much vitality as possible and charisma but everything else won so there are strategies to beat him hint be undead undead are immune to taunts okay um but yeah charlie white um i want to give him a massive shout out if you're a fan of critical or something um he has been a big supporter of the series over the years and um, his support means the world to me and I just uh, want to give him a big shout out and we may see more of him towards the end of you know of the series so uh, he hopefully will do some videos and so on um, and bring some more attention to the games so yeah um, huge Charles not actually that big that that's the joke <laughs> Oh, yeah, so losing a leg here, um, and I'm oh, losing an arm. There you go. So yeah, if you lose an egg, I, I actually lose an egg. If you lose arms, these both guys both lost arms in a very unusual um, sequence of events. 
actually uh, planned that. I coded it up so that would happen. But yeah, you lose your weapon arm. You can still fight on with other skills and so on. If not, you always have the yield button. Um, you lose a leg, you move half the speed. If you lose both legs, you can't uh, jump or move. No, you lose one leg, you can't jump. Two legs, you can't move, I think. I love the... Um, Losing of limbs in this game. I always wanted that in, in sort of fighting games I played. Uh, it's quite rare now, but the further you get on the game, the more chances of doing critical hits and so on become, and the more you'll see the blood and guts of that. Another one. This guy's just lost his heart to a skeleton. There it is, bouncing around on the floor. <laughs> so there's a sword throw attack, which you've just done. I'll show you that again. It's really quick. You have to blink and you miss it, but... Um, I'm throwing a sword at the Floralisk, and you can throw your weapon like that. And if you do that, you um, find uh, that you have to switch to your backup weapon, which is usually a shank, and um, you have to wait to a cooldown to get that back. You can also switch weapons between melee and ranged as well in the game. You can throw potions too after you drink them. Um, sometimes they hit, sometimes they miss, but <laughs> critical. Critical, that's not supposed to be critical, it's maybe trivial damage. Uh, that does one point of damage. If you kill someone with a potion, I'll probably put a special achievement in there. Now, I'm going to play that little scene again. I want you to listen because you hear Charlie's, my boy Charlie's voice, not Charlie White, but my little boy, baby Charlie, in there. you got to listen very carefully. Oh, there it is, one more time. There it is. Yeah, so this is a cool silhouetted fight, which is, you know, classic sort of reminiscent of the 1980s style kung fu movies and the montages where they fight at sunset and that kind of thing with, uh, as, you know, they become silhouettes. There are currently two different arenas that you fight. Um, one, this might be the Veil of Shadows, and the other one is Ancient Tolator, where you fight in the shadows. And when you hit them, I think you light up for a second. But I love this effect. It's such a simple thing, but... It just feels kind of epic. And there's a skeleton and um, my Oliver the Unready character juking it out. That's our Starbound Gladiator in his special ship. And he's coming for you in 300 days. A lot of people have said to me, ah, oh, 300 days, it's not going to be enough. I can't, I, uh, because I lose and I lose days and that kind of thing. And there's a lot of panic about that. I got a plan, guys. Trust me, I got a plan. I'll tell you about that in a second. Actually, I might as well tell you about that now. When you um, go through the game, there'll be ways to gain days back. And that you and the automatons will be able to team up. Um, you'll find various sort of radar towers where the automatons can make contact with allies from throughout the galaxy. And these allies will be able to um, try and deter the Starbound Gladiator. You have to pay some stars and that kind of thing and risk something. But they might go, ah, oh, we can send um, the Star Centurions from Gavrax 5 uh, to try and intercept him. And y y they do that and, you know, he might be sort of, he'll defeat them all because he's a Starbound Gladiator and he's awesome. But he will be sort of waylaid for five days and it will say, you know, uh, successful plus five days. If not, you might lose an extra day. So there's going to be a bit of a gamble there um, and that will be a fun way uh, to keep the game going. But also... When you travel, a lot of people said it's too slow. It's taking me two or three days to get from town to town. You'll get things like tigers, uh, horses, um, walking spiders, even magic carpets and that kind of thing to be able to travel through the game. And I just want to appreciate this music at the end. It sounds so epic. Listen to these guitars. I love that. The Overthrown have absolutely knocked it out of the ballpark. Av has Electro and um, Tekel Akagia, who are the other two great composers who've done some tracks. Um, Electro did the awesome title track that you, when you load the game up, and that was heard in the teaser trailer. And Tekel has done the um, Sword and Sandals sort of three kind of re remade song that you hear during the intro and that kind of thing. So um, these guys, I, I can't thank them enough. There's so much going on. Um, in the game that is improved by the music and without the musicians uh there wouldn't be you know sword and sounds wouldn't be the same that says play the demo now on steam which means you can literally play the demo right now you can go to the link below and check out the d demo if you have a pc 
you know, it'll be coming to Mac later in the year, but right now the focus is for PC. And it'll also be coming to iOS and Android later in the year too. No, no, after the game is full release, sorry. So it probably won't be till the year after this, once we get it all sorted. And fade to black. All right, so there you go. What did you think? Um, I spent a good sort of three days on that, um, which for me is a long time as I usually put the trailers together quite quick. And, you know, you can tell they're not triple A style Hollywood, you know, glossy trailers, but I think, you know, they represent what Swords and Sandals is and that's fun and, you know, you know indie craftsmanship and, you know, they're a bit unique and I, I never will change that style, I hope. Um, I can't wait to see what you think of the demo. Um I'm patching it as often as I can. You know, the Steam Next Fest starts um, in three days. And so the, you know, Steam will be promoting the game to a wider audience. And so you'll start to see a bit more of a buzz. And then from there, uh, work will begin on the early access build. I'll be updating the demo as I go with patchings and so on um, and, you know, improving that. So you'll be able to keep playing the demo through that time. Most people say the demo goes for about an hour, up to an hour. Some, I mean, I can finish about half an hour if I, you know, really power through it. But uh, your experience may differ. If you find you can't get past one of the bosses, try a different strategy or a different character. Because there's a lot of balancing and skills missing and that kind of thing. But um, long way to go yet. But I hope you like what you see so far. Because um, for me, I love it. I mean, I, I'm you know, not too proud to say this. But this is my favorite Sword and Sounds game I've ever worked on. It's been the most fun dev process. And even now, I can't wait to, you know, I love playing it even as I'm developing it. I look forward, you know, I test the demo every day or so. And I go, yeah, this is still fun. And, you know, I'm now a good sort of, what, over a year in, you know, around about a year into development of this, which is, uh, you know, a long time by my standards. And um, I'm, I think the fact that I'm still enjoying building it is a good sign. And I want to give a big thank you to my patrons. And and some of you actually sent me messages uh, over this last week, um, just, you know, get well messages um, because of the COVID thing. So <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks for caring. You know, I, honestly, um, between you and the Discord channel, I got some really sweet messages and my I'm doing great. My family's uh, doing great, you know, as well as you can doing with COVID. The little boys have recovered very nicely, although, you know, Charlie has it right now and still has fevers and so on. But, you know, we're getting through it. Uh, that's what Patreon is. It's, uh, you know, it's a community and that's what Discord is. It's a community and um, we are not unique, but we are in many ways, you know, special yeah, And in terms of uh, you guys, what you do for me and what how you do for each other. And just think, there's a lot of care and love in this community and I, I, I appreciate um, the way it's been built up over the years. And, you know, it's small, but we're growing and growing. All right, patrons, Neighbor Jack, Jantiku Chinahi, Noah Gudajan, Xap Omega, Ila Gurevich, Jeffro of X3D, Bardi X, Pialo34, Yunus, David Hollander, Daniel Funches, Brandon K, Michael Loda, Lee Hao Yu, and welcome, Churstons, to the patron. You guys are the best. You're the best around. I salute you, and so does the patron, Arma, who says, if you'd like to be a patron, that would make my day. <laughs> All right, Thargan, I don't know what would make his day. He's a grumpy armor and, you know, maybe no customers, maybe just people leaving him alone would make his day. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Um, thanks for being part of the Whiskey Barrel Studios uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, if you like what you see, if you just come into the channel, um, you can, of course, subscribe. Um, and we're almost at 7,000. It's taken a while, but we're getting there. You know, next stop, a million. Sure. Next stop in like 100 years and I'll be this ancient old wizard going, I've just released Swords and Sandals 45. For those who of you who still remember swords. Oh, no, I've just wet myself because I'm so old. All right. Um, clearly, I'm uh, still feeling the effects of COVID. Maybe it's gone to my brain. Um, I hope you guys are doing okay. If any of you have gone through COVID, uh, it's no laughing matter. Uh, it hits you like a ton of bricks. And, um, you know, we were lucky in how we've ex experienced it. Um, my boy got it from daycare. Um, and it was a mild strand, but you know, it is serious. So, you know, um, if you're not sure, please get vaccinated and, um, look after yourselves because it's not going away. You know, it's here with us to stay. Speaking of not going away, I'll be here. Um, next week I'm going to be doing a long video for the next fest where I'll be playing the game and talking through it. It's going to be a live broadcast on stream. So hopefully I can capture that and upload it to YouTube. If not, I'll do another one. Uh, exclusively for YouTube. 
All right, my friends, uh, until next week, thanks for joining me for the trailer breakdown. Please try the demo. Get get into it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you real soon. Patch 0.2.1 uh, is coming over the weekend too, which will improve a lot of the things. Bye for now.